An awesome God. Come on, church. How great thou art. You are God. And mighty are your miracles. We stand in awe of your holy name. Tell him, Lord. Lord, we bow and worship you. Sing it, awesome God. Awesome God. How great thou art. Cause you are God And mighty are your miracles We stand in awe Of your holy name Lord we bow And worship you Come on and sing it with me Awesome God How great thou art you are God, mighty are your miracles. We stand in awe of your holy name. And Lord, we bow and worship you. He's the King of kings, Lord of lords. Sing it with me. King of kings, Lord of lords, everlasting king. Savior, Redeemer, soon coming King, King of Kings, Lord of Lords, everlasting King, Savior, Redeemer, King of Kings, King of Kings, Lord of Lords, everlasting King, Savior, Redeemer, soon coming King, King of Kings, Lord of Lords, Savior, Redeemer, He's awesome, He's awesome. Come on, he's awesome, my God, he's awesome, he's awesome, awesome God, how great thou art, thank you Jesus, you are God, and mighty are your miracles, we stand in awe, of your holy name thank you master lord we bow and worship you greetings and welcome to the morning prayer broadcast my name is samuel pinder i'm the son of pastor sean and amy pinder i work the sound at the church and i do a lot of the video editing and it's been an honor to serve my parents in the ministry and I am grateful and honored to be on here on this morning prayer broadcast. I do have a word for you today, but before we get into that, I just want to lift you up in prayer. Father God, we lift your people up before you this morning. We pray that you, that you would use this word to bless them, speak to them, encourage them, uplift them, help them in their day-to-day -day lives, Lord. Answer their prayers, bless them, and use this word to strengthen them. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. So today, we're going to be talking about the prayer of agreement. And that's when a group of people come together and pray for one common thing that they need God to do in their lives. And it's very powerful for people to do that. So the Bible says in Hebrews chapter 10, verse 25, And let us not neglect our meeting together, as some people do, but encourage one another, especially now that the day of his return is drawing near. This is Paul. He's encouraging the church members to keep meeting and praying together. This is Paul. He's encouraging the church members to keep meeting and praying together because when a group, a body of believers get together and pray, stuff happens. God answers prayer. It's very powerful for that. So uh, the main portion of the story, I'm going to be talking from Acts chapter 12 in the New Living Translation. It says in verse 1, about that time, King Herod Agrippa began to persecute some believers in the church. He had the apostle James, John's brother, killed with a sword. When Herod saw how much this pleased the Jewish people, he also arrested Peter. 
This took place during the Passover celebration. This is almost similar with what happened to Jesus. Jesus was arrested during Passover, and King Herod of Agrippa is trying to please the Jews, so he's trying to kill Peter as well, because just because he killed James, he could get away with doing it to Peter. It says in verse 4, Then he imprisoned him, placing him under the guard of four squads of four soldiers each. Herod intended to bring Peter out for public trial after the Passover. And it says in verse 5, But while Peter was in prison, the church prayed very earnestly for him. So this church, they were believing God to do something for Peter. They needed a miracle because it looked like all hope was lost for him. And these believers, they grouped together and they were praying earnestly. It says they were praying very earnestly and they were most likely praying all night for Peter because they wanted God to release him. And it's important for bodies of believers, groups of people to get together and pray for one common goal. Because Jesus said in Matthew chapter 18, verse 20, For where two or three gather together in my name, there I am with them. It's important for believers to group together and pray, because even in Deuteronomy, it says, One of you can chase a thousand, but two of you can chase ten thousand. When believers join together in faith with God, he is right there among them. He is right there with you. When A husband prays with their wife, or they pray with their children, when they pray with their family, when they pray with people at their church, when they pray with their pastors, God is right there among them, and he is listening to that prayer, and it helps strengthen your faith when you get together. Now, of course, spending time in prayer uh, alone with God is important, and it helps you build your relationship personally with him, but I'm just highlighting the power of the prayer of agreement with a group of people. Never think that you can do it all by yourself. No one man is an island. Sometimes you need the faith of other people joined together with yours to help you believe God to do what you need him to do in your life. The church knew that escape for Peter was impossible. He was chained between two guards. And they knew that it'd be hard for him to get out, so they had to pray for him. Peter was like, a pillar in the church. He was a leader in the church. He was like a pastor to them. So they were praying for their pastor. And on a side note, it is important to keep your spiritual leaders and pastors lifted up in prayer before God because you don't know what they're going through there. They, they go through a lot of stuff trying to lead the people of God. And I know many of you are praying for your pastors and we're grateful to you for that. And we're praying for you too. So the Bible says in Acts chapter 12, verse 6, The night before Peter was to be placed on trial, he was asleep, fastened with two chains between two soldiers. Others stood guard at the prison gate. Now this is almost kind of funny to an extent because Peter is about to be killed the next day and he's sleeping. This shows how much he grew in his faith because in Matthew chapter 8, when the disciples were stuck inside a storm, Jesus was the one sleeping on the boat and the disciples were crying out to him, Master, do you not care that we are about to perish? And Jesus said, O ye of little faith. But now fast forward here in Acts chapter 12, Peter's the one who's sleeping when he's about to die. And this just shows how much Peter grew in his faith. Peter grew in his faith because he had seen the resurrected Jesus. He knew that if he were to die the next day, he knew exactly where he would be going. And it says in verse 7, Suddenly there was a bright light in the cell, and an angel of the Lord stood before Peter. The angel struck him on the side to awaken him and said, Quick, get up. And the chains fell off his wrists. Now Peter had to have been in a real deep sleep if that angel had uh, struck him on the side like that. It says... Then the angel told him, get dressed and put on your sandals. And he did. Now put on your coat and follow me, the angel ordered. So Peter left the cell following the angel. But all the time he thought it was a vision. He didn't realize it was actually happening. They passed the first and second guard posts and came to the iron gate leading to the city. And this opened for them all by itself. So they passed through and started walking down the street. And then the angel suddenly left him. Peter didn't even realize all all of this was true. He thought it was a vision. But in verse 11, Peter finally came to his senses. It's really true, he said. The Lord has sent his angel and saved me from Herod and from what the Jewish leaders had planned to do to me. 
When he realized this, he went to the home of Mary, the mother of John Mark, where many were gathered for prayer. They were still praying for Peter. They didn't even know that God was already answering their prayer in that moment. God may be answering your prayer right now, and you don't even know it. You're still praying for it, but God is answering you right now. I want you to take courage because your answer is on the way. Just keep praying and keep having faith. It says in verse 13, he knocked at the door in the gate, and a servant girl named Rhoda came to open it. When she recognized Peter's voice, she was so overjoyed that instead of opening the door, she ran back inside and told everyone, Peter is standing at the door. She was so happy that she just ran off and didn't even let him in. In verse 15, the people said, you're out of your mind. When she insisted, they decided it must be his angel. Now, don't make the same mistake these people made. God was answering their prayer and they were being doubtful. It's like they didn't even have faith with with what they were praying for they wanted god to deliver peter and the answer was coming and they were doubtful when your answer comes don't be doubtful be grateful and thankful to god and be expecting for that answer to come it says in verse 16 meanwhile peter continued knocking when they finally opened the door and saw him they were amazed he motioned for them to quiet down and told them how the lord had led him out of prison Tell James and the other brothers what happened, he said, and then he went to another place. At dawn, there was a great commotion among the soldiers about what had happened to Peter. Herod Agrippa ordered a thorough search for him. When he couldn't be found, Herod interrogated the guards and sentenced them to death. Afterward, Herod left Judea to stay in Caesarea for a while. God will judge your enemies. What they had planned to do with you, God will turn it back on their own heads. God won't let them think for a minute that they're going to get away with what they're doing to you. And Herod didn't escape either. It says in verse 20, Now Herod was very angry with the people of Tyre and Sidon, so they sent a delegation to make peace with him because their cities were dependent upon Herod's country for food. The delegates won the support of Blastus, Herod's personal assistant, and an appointment with Herod was granted. When the day arrived, Herod put on his royal robes, sat on his throne, and made a speech to them. The people gave him a great ovation, shouting, It's the voice of a god, not of a man. They were trying to claim that he was God. Instantly, an angel of the Lord struck Herod with his sickness because he accepted the people's worship instead of giving glory to God. So he was consumed with worms and died. God will judge your enemies for what they try to do to you. He will not let them escape. Herod tried to lay his hands on one of Christ's apostles, Peter, and God knocked him out because of it. And even those soldiers who were guarding Peter, they died too. So just know that God will judge your enemies. Don't try to take matters into your own hands. Just keep praying and believe in God for a miracle. Believe God that he will answer your prayer and God will give the answer to you. Just gonna lift you up a prayer right now father god we thank you for your people that's watching on this morning we pray for them lord we pray that you would answer their prayers lord we pray that you would strengthen their faith lord that house that they're praying to get lord we pray that you would give it to them that car that they're praying for lord we pray that you would answer their prayer and give them a brand new car that promotion on the job that they're praying for We pray that you would give them that promotion in the name of Jesus, Lord. We thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord. God, that family member that needs deliverance, we pray that you would bring them back. We pray that you would bring them back to their family. And we pray that you would save them. You would reveal yourselves to them. Show yourself to them. Show them that you are real and lead them to you, Lord. That child that ran away from home, Lord, we pray that you would bring them back. That unsaved spouse, that unsaved brother, that unsaved father, that unsaved mother, Lord, we pray that you would bring them back to you, Lord. We pray that you would answer the prayers of your people as they continue to pray and lift up their family members and lift up their situations before you, God. We pray that you would answer their situations in the name of Jesus. We pray that you would answer them in Jesus' name. Your answer is on the way. God is about to answer you. 
Have faith and stay strong in the name of Jesus. Continue to pray. Continue to have faith and do not give up because your answer is on the way. That is the power of the prayer of agreement. And I want to... I want to go back on something I said earlier when Peter was chained in between them two guards. I said that he was he was comfortable and he was peaceful. He was allowed to sleep because he knew if he were to die where he would be going. And if you were to die right now, do you know where you would be going? Peter knew that if he died, he would have went to heaven. Are you confident that if you died, you would go to heaven? Friends, I want you to know that Jesus died for you. He gave his life for you. He died on Calvary Cross and shed his blood so that you could receive salvation. But the story does not end there because he rose from the grave on the third day to give us eternal life. Now, because of what Jesus did for us, we can go to heaven. If you want to accept Jesus as Lord and Savior of your life, pray this prayer with me right now. Father God, I come before you right now just as I am, a sinner, but I want that to change, Lord. I believe that you sent your son, Jesus, to die on the cross for my sins, and I believe that you rose again on the third day so that I could have eternal life. I repent for all of my sins, Lord, and I turn away from them. I confess with my mouth, Lord, that you are the Savior of this world. From this day forward, I turn my back on the world, the flesh, and the devil to serve the true and living God and his son, Jesus Christ. Amen. If you pray that prayer for me, I want to be the first to welcome you into the family of God. Your sins are forgiven. And now if you were to die, you would go to heaven and spend eternity with God. If you pray that prayer of salvation with me, then I want you to download this salvation booklet that we have on the screen. The Salvation Booklet encourages you to keep praying to God and praying is simply talking to God and just building a relationship with Him. The book also encourages you to read the Bible, starting in the book of John. It's the easiest book to read. It really helps strengthen new believers. We also encourage you to join a church, join, get together with under a shepherd, a pastor, with a group of in a body of believers. And if you live in the DFW area, then we welcome you to join our church, Miracle Healing Center. The information is on the screen right now if you're interested in joining our church. Also, if you gave your life to Jesus and pray that prayer for me, don't forget to comment, I've just surrendered my life to Jesus below the video. Let us know that you are now a child of God. Don't be ashamed of him. Thanks for joining me today on this morning prayer broadcast. I love you, and God loves you. God bless. I'm asking 300 of you who have never partnered with this ministry or never done something significant, and you know this ministry has been a blessing to millions of you around the world. I'm asking 300 people to make a commitment for the next 12 months to stand with this ministry, and I'm asking you to do something significant to help us continue to preach this gospel around the world. We want to begin three nights of miracles in a few months, but we cannot accomplish this by ourselves. We need you to stand with us financially. We need you to make a commitment for the next 12 months to do something significant. And people, this is not a joke. This is not a game. I'm very serious about this. If you know you are able to do it and you can make that commitment for the next 12 months, I want you to do something significant for the next 12 months to help us do what God is calling us to do. You know me and Pastor Amy, we take these things very serious. To give in this offering, you can visit us online at seanpinder.net forward slash give. You can also give through the ministry app. You can also give through the ministry PayPal account. That address is paypal.me forward slash Sean Pinder Ministries. You can also give through the ministry Zell account. The ministry Zell email address is info at seanpinder.net. You can also give through the ministry cash app account. 
The ministry cash app address is the dollar sign Sean Pinder Ministries. You can also give through the ministry Venmo account. The ministry Venmo account is at Sean Pinder Ministries. You can also text to give. All you have to do is text the letters SPM to the number 45888 and a link will automatically be sent to you. You can also give by mailing your donations into the ministry. Just remember to make your checks and money orders out to Sean Pinder Ministries, P.O. Box 2726, McKinney, Texas, 75070. Listen, Main Pastor Amy, we love all of you. We appreciate you. And a tremendous, a huge thank you to our, to our partners who make this broadcast possible to help us take this gospel around the world. We love all of you. Join us again on tomorrow morning for another morning prayer broadcast. God bless you.